come to Jamaica, the island of real bad man. Some real dog at you throw some real gang bang. No run for the fair, the knock your bitch back. Step up! These are the moments oh. when everybody gun loaded. We not instigate violence, but we believe in the self defense no matter what. These are the moments when every gangster gun loaded. We not instigate violence, but we believe in the self defense. Welcome to True Island Stories. This is a part four of the rise and fall of the G City Six gang out of Montego Bay, Jamaica. Now, if you miss part three, which is the last episode, I implore you to go and watch it as to, you know, get caught up. If you're just joining the channel, that is. And uh, we left off in part three, where uh, we stated uh, it wasn't really squash or shabdan. The two duns who were, the two duns were going at each other's throats like all get outs. They weren't the one who necessarily started the all out conflict. Neither men started the beef that was orchestrated and uh, that was orchestrated by the stain of Fred Man's uh, culpability. And I stated if you took out Squash's mom and Fred Man out of the picture, as effed up as it might have sounded, then uh, their journeys would be on different trajectories going forward. Yes, and because of that conflict between uh, Shabby and Squash, they also drew an innocent bystander, Kanik La, into the conflict as well. Well, not actually drawing in per se as him going directly and doing things, no. They drew his name into it, but he held steadfast because he chose not to pick neither side, you know? And he was eventually ostracized by Squashman for not doing so because in Squash eyes, it's either his side or your back, which equates in the laws of gangsterdom to no side. Capish, maybe he goes. Squashman had also inherited his brother's enemies as well. Which didn't all go well for the trending artist. Wherever he went, trouble and destruction and mayhem followed him. And worse, even he was arrested as a person of interest in uh, September 2018. In Fader Magazine, they did an excerpt on his arrest. I'll just read a part of it and you can go and check out the article, which they have uh, stated some more intricate details on the Montegonian Dan, so you can check it out. Okay, but in early August of 2018, squash born Andre Whitaker was detained by the Jamaica Constabulary during a state of emergency sweep in Montego Bay due to a rise in crime and violence without a formal charge or clear reason as to why he was picked up. The 28-year-old artist spent five months at the Freeport Police Station in Montego Bay, but during his difficult time of incarceration, his songs, Make It Shake and some other songs started spreading the streets like a mad virus. Squashman was finally freed in January and since then, the aptly dubbed Six Boss has made a beeline straight to the top of the dancehall food chain. It's not something I plan on, he said of his rise when he was spoken to on the phone in uh, late July. Growing up, I always liked sing at home in my bar room. It was just a natural thing. So you can check out more. It's a long article so you can check it out on Fader magazine. Okay. Now after Squash's release though, he hooked up with Shabdan in 2018, 2019 I think. Yeah. And uh, they were coming from uh, Dream Weekend party and they were in the Shabdan's car together. At that time he was staying with Shabdan in Kingston and Shabdan let him hear the any weather rhythm and that was the first smash hit Squash got on the any weather rhythm but as fated of it squash and his ally shabby would turn into bitter bitter enemies and went on to engage in an all out annihilation of each other in efforts to completely extinct each other and the thing is it wasn't either of them who started the conflict as mentioned in the above it was started in Fredman and another pilgrim from Moby named Blah Blah Blah. That's so it's on the channel so you can go check it out. Got into a heated conflict. Fredman beat up the youth and the youth retaliated by using a piece of broadboard to attack Fredman, guard off and beat him mercilessly. Bluff, 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 bluff. Fredman then enlisted his friends to corner the kid and dirt him. Now the kid had to flee to a nearby community, but he underestimated the tentacle reach of Fredman to his own detriment. 
friend man enlisted some of his friends the dirt the youth that's why i tell you check the channel everything is on the channel because that story in a fully fully detail is on the channel fred man then felt the wrath of shabdan who wanted peace at the time shabdan held one of the biggest murder meetings in montego bay of all the then active gangsters in and around the area and demanded peace immediately that's when Shabdan just to get dipped from America and the whole place was in turmoil and Shabdan said look we can't make money with war mm -mm. peace at that meeting he almost dirt G-Man that's Daniel Whitaker after G-Man began acting out of pocket by displaying his objections boisterously at damage who was second in command at the time to Shabdan and Shabdan was not having it disrespecting the dumb was a no-no cookie. Shabdan had to act quickly and bring to bear the wrath of his authority on spot. He called a Jima like a spoiled brat and dragged him outside like a caveman. He was going to take his head off. But even while he was being dragged like a ragdoll to his potential rip apart, G-Man was defiant against all odds. He stood ten toes tall and never once wavered in the face of certain death. He never begged for mercy at no point. But luckily for him though, his life was spared by Shabby. By an attendant who a big Shabby to steal his toaster that was aimed directly at G-Man's forehead while Shabby shouted angrily at the top of his larynx. What do you want? Eh? I kill you, I'm a kill you, brother. Eh? Why you won't listen to me, brother? Eh? They not tell you to stop raising your voice at me, huh? 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 So that me crack your back last call, eh? And G-Man just looked above at Shabdan and kept the beating. Yo, I can't believe you. Really, at this point, we're damaging our brother. Tell you that pass. What are you going to say? I'm not. I'm here. Really, at this point, you're damaging. Really, at this point. Eh? Well, I want to pull from his G-Man's eyes. Not for fear of losing his life in the moment, no. But the fact that he had stood Call for Shabdan while he was abroad carrying out plenty of his courageous and diabolical acts. In his uh, Shabdan's name, while Damage, who was left in charge of the gang, did not put in half as much work as he, G Man, because not because he was scared, Damage was no, but because he had killed too many too quick and recklessly and had gotten hot and had gotten himself arrested. So, after getting bail, he was forbidden to remain in the community on his bail conditions. So someone had to pick up the slack of evil. Yeah? And G-Man certainly obliged front and center because he, G-Man, was third in line to being the capo at his shop dance on the boss. Sadly, however, G-Man's words of warning to Shabby fell on deaf ears. Only for Shabdan to deeply regret not listening to G-Man later on down the road, G-Man was real to the core. And the same cornerstone that the builder refused eventually became the same cornerstone the evil builder had to eat his pride and use. G-Man became a solid ally to Shabby. While damage you almost caused Shabby to dirt him, G-Man, because during the big gangster meeting, G-Man constantly tried to point out to Shabby, look Shabs, you're a man, so you right man over me? You ain't no real ninja in these streets, bro. I'm poor chalk grave, bro. No cat, bro. Put in a fork in them grave, bro. He a snipe. We the ones putting in the work in the siren, get it, not him. He my what? what? He man and a blood man for me. What did you think? Damage just stood there idly by twiddling his thumbs and let G-Man carry on and uh, splatter his name and uh, stain in his name like No, Damage is not just stand there fiddling his gun thumb and let G-Man just simply disrespect his name because the whole streets knew Damage was a street certified savage in the Montegonian geographs. They all knew Damage was mentally unhinged. He was the incubus and harbinger of death. Mm -hmm. It is said you could see the wretched souls of his slain Vic's reflection in his eyes. In Damage's retina, as if they were screaming, Help! Help us, please, from this wretched and tormented abyss. Because even in their state of unalivings, it was as if Damage's doppy was in hell with them, regaling them over and over and over and over again and again and again. That 
was the primal nature of the unknown beast with which they had to contend. Damage's badness trigonometrics was a listed of the chain. Matter of fact, if you check the Weenie series or the Portrait series on the channel, you will see that Damage was the actual OG who took G-Man off the porch and took him under his wings as his evil apprentice. At one point, when Weenie got dirted, when he took out his brother's squashy scar to spin the block, he was pounced upon by his brother's ops. Or it was more like, you ninjas up the road versus we ninjas down here. What's up? And on that fateful night, when Squash came in tired and went to sleep, little did he know the brother he was most closest to, the one who taught him how to dance, the one who they both shared each other's slide and wines with, tin boom and cartwheels with, even Dengel ranking flesh from time to time, eh? We need took the car when Squash fell asleep. Or perhaps borrowed it or whatever and rolled out. I don't know. I wasn't there. But when Rini reached the intersection up the block, unfortunately for him, he was now in Ops territory. They had the weaned one in their crosshairs dead to rights. They stopped the car and dragged him out aggressively. Come on, come on, come on. They tried dragging him out. Now, mind you, Weenie was no gangster. No, far from it. Check his story in the channel for more details about him. Gangsterism just wasn't his DNA, it was just his lifestyle. He was a dancer and a floss and not a killer. But on the night of dread, his neutrality counted for nada. Nunca! Absolutely nada, how nada. They opened fire on him mercilessly. <laughs> Weenie was hit multiple times all over his body. He slumped where he sat. He never saw it coming. They had hit a real one. And for that, retaliation would be swift and brutal. The arrow has spoken. You've come to the end of part four of the rise and fall of the GCT gang. Join us support five as the story. The series gets more keckled up. If you watch the story till its end, through its entirety, Menke thank you. And please note, a little comment, a like and a share. Press that notification bell, it really helps the channel. That engagement, that hey, hello, what's up? Really helps the channel. Until then, next time, what would stay the trouble? But if you choose to look off a knife, then there's a chance you might end up in trial and so is war. Well, are you choosing? I am joy. Peppa, you know the real tree tender. Huh? How I grow, sometimes the road tough side slow. <laughs> Real patriots never buck, never fall. Oh, yeah. How they get around, that's why. Buck from the boy, who no do that? Who? Who uh. no can kill with child, who no do that? Who from your soul, who no wrong do that? Yo, eh. And a man bust the shot him off a pack up and go Mind it on him head back and go Pop off him strap on him friend him for do None of that eh. <laughs> No assumption, I saw the ground run Power, married to corruption Criminal, bread from limited options Ten generation, I see the set song One one head man will live long, name one Things will ever be ruined with not done, name one One good and his politician, name one And get a youth, resilient Back from the boy, I wanna do that. Good. Who no can tell me jai? Who no good? Who from your side? Who don't know what wrong boy? Yo, 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 a man better go. And a man bust a shot him off a back up and go. Point it on him head back and go. Pop off him strap and him friend them for do it. None of that, yo, a man better. Things risky, for the misfit. Dead rate fit the logistic. Chris, Chris, ha, I want the biscuit, man. Eight of crackers with a whiskey. Uh, hmm. You're not listening. Uh, Crime live here, so it's not visiting. Visitors, careful, they know what the business is. Murder, plunder, pillage in who? Bloodshed in all the villages. You name it, you will live in it. Get rich, I do a special delivery. Nightmare, in time, into the images. Vengeance, blood the cycle, continuing, but.
know you seek that, but it's no revenge. Looking at the mirror, there is no difference. Man, we're full of hey. Eh. How we know we trench back from the boy? I wanna do that. Who no can't tell we jaw? Who no poor? Who from your side? We don't know our own poor. Yup. Now I'm on the top. When a man bust, I shot him off a back up and poor. Mind get on him head back and poor. Pop off him strap on him friend him for doer. None of that. Now I'm on the top. No assumption. I saw the ground run. Power married to corruption. Criminal bred from limited options. Ten generation passing the set song. One one ten man will live long. We must fall out. We no only have one. One honest politician. Only have one who can get the youth resilient. Fuck from the boy. We no do that. Boy, can't kill with jaw on the back. Boy, move from your side. We don't know what wrong. Boy, eh, yo, yo, a man better boy. Any man does not shut him off a back up and boy. Might take on him head back. Come boy, pop off him strap on him friend. Do it, eh. We no know that to the top. Yo, you know the thing going up, suck a seat up a beat, you know Hey man, take your two man My boy, my boy man Man to them purple, you know